First question here, would I please address the nutritional needs for people with thyroid issues? I have two women, one has an overactive thyroid and the other an underactive thyroid. All right, well this is interesting, right? Because in the world of medical nutrition, there's this stuff that we talk about called adaptogens. Adaptogenic nutrition upregulates or downregulates uh, body function and it's the same therapeutic. So whether it's an overactive thyroid or an underactive thyroid, we give the body the same stuff. There's a little bit of tweakage there, but more or less we give the body the same stuff and the body figures it out all by itself. This of course is the fundamental message that we talk about that your body has the ability to fix itself. We just give it what it needs and get out of the way and let it fix it. So with thyroid issues, the three nutrients that the thyroid needs are iodine, selenium, and copper. The easiest way to get iodine is from iodized salt. So get sea salt that has iodine added to it or just normal table salt that's been iodized salt your food so that it tastes good every day and once you start to salt your food if you've been on a salt restricted diet after you start salting your food for two or three days you'll be surprised all of a sudden your salt tooth will kick in and you'll start craving salt and you want to just follow your body's lead in that regard and you will also have the curious experience that once you start to use salt deliberately your need for salt, your body's calling for salt, your natural urge for salt will change day to day. You might need to use three times as much salt on Wednesday as you need it on Monday just to make your food taste the same because your need for salt changes. And once you start to dial this in, uh, your body lets you know whether you need to use more or less salt. So just salt your food so that it tastes good. And if it tastes too salty, you've used too much. Okay, it's really pretty simple. So iodized salt is a fundamentally key thing to do here and then we need selenium and copper and thank God for Dr. Wallach because we've got both of those in one supplement. Selenium and copper balance each other out. If you take too much of one you lose the other. So it's good if you're trying to support and promote selenium or copper levels to take a supplement that has both in it at the right level and Dr. Wallach's selenium supplement does. The recommendation is one bottle of selenium per 50 pounds of body weight per month, not to exceed more than four bottles a month. So after you've got the selenium, the copper, and the iodine handled, the only thing left is to give the body the other 87 essential nutrients, right? And that's the healthy start pack. So the easiest way to secure that is one healthy start pack per 100 pounds of body weight per month. Okay, now. This, of course, so we've got the 90 essential nutrients, the extra iodine, extra selenium, and extra copper. Now, of course, we have to facilitate the absorption of that stuff, and we do that by eliminating the 10 bad foods. I don't care what you've got. I don't care if you've got nothing. I don't care if you're just doing the healthy start pack for maintenance. Everybody avoids the 10 bad foods. Everybody. All right. Now, if the thyroid is overactive, there are foods that you can eat that subdue thyroid function. And those foods are broccoli, cauliflower, eggplant, and Brussels sprouts and cabbage. Uh, broccoli, cauliflower, eggplant, Brussels sprouts, and cabbage. So if your thyroid is overactive, eat a lot of those foods. And if your thyroid is underactive, don't eat any of those foods. It's as simple as that. So avoid the 10 bad foods neutrify the body appropriately and then add or eliminate broccoli, cauliflower, eggplant, Brussels sprouts and cabbage appropriately. All right now there's one last thing to do when there's a thyroid issue and we need not overlook the obvious. Your neck has a natural curve in it. If you look at an x-ray of the side of your head, you know an x-ray from the side, your neck has an s-curve in it and if you've been in a car accident or fallen down the stairs or got checked into the boards too hard when you were playing hockey as a kid or whatever, your anatomy of your neck can be incorrect. The trauma could have forced your neck into a position that's not healthy. So if you have any type of a thyroid issue, go to a chiropractor, have them do a side x-ray of your neck 
and see if your head's on your body correctly. See if your head's on, screwed on right, right? Now if the curve is correct, you're good to go. You just need to focus on the nutrition. If the curve is incorrect, then the chiropractor will give you exercises to put the curve back the way that nature intended it. Some people, they don't have any curve at all. Their neck is straight up and down like a popsicle stick. That's called a military neck, and that's not good. Because the nerves that come to the thyroid, the thyroid is right here, the nerves that come to the thyroid come from the neck. So if the neck is tweaked, if it's not on correctly, then the nerve transmission is going to be messed up no matter how good your nutrition is. So once we fix the anatomical thing, the structural thing, if there is a structural thing to fix, we're good to go. After that, it's the nutrition uh, and the extra iodine, selenium and copper. And with a thyroid condition, you want to look to see improvement every four to six weeks. The last thing, the cherry on the cake of a thyroid condition, either to upregulate or downregulate thyroid function, either or, is the essential oil myrrh, M-Y-R-R-H, the essential oil myrrh. If you put the essential oil right on your throat, right like this, a couple of times a day and before you go to bed, that seeps into the thyroid and helps the thyroid to upregulate or downregulate depending on the needs of the body. And that's what you need to do to support and promote the health of your thyroid gland.